Hi, Rod on Art Range, and today is Building a Fire Under Adverse Conditions, Part 2. Now, in Part 1, I discussed a little bit about how to build a fire in the sense of finding the right place to build a fire, getting all your tinder together before you ever strike a match or strike your lighter. And I talked about a few things that may or may not start fires, and some of what I typically carry. So because we've already covered getting your tinder together, finding the right place to build a fire, and things like that in part one, we don't have to rehash that today. But in terms of things you can use to build a fire, items that you can make, items that you can buy, that generated a great deal of commentary from people telling me all about the great things that they're going to make or the great things they would make, a little bit about the things people buy. And although some of the commentary was intended to be taken seriously, you have to remember some of it was only for comedic purposes. Like the guy who talked about a great fire starter being carrying a Ziploc baggie that in it has newspaper soaked in bacon grease. And he warned that it could go bad, and that while in the field you have to be aware that it might attract bears. <laughs> Obviously, that comment was only intended for humor. He wasn't really intending that you should carry such a thing. At least, I hope he wasn't. But a lot of people's commentary was intended to be taken seriously, especially about all the things that they're gonna make. Now, I have discussed this at length on several previous occasions, evidently not at enough length, but when it comes to the difference between fire starting materials that you can just go to the store and buy versus the things you can make, let me show you something. So here we are at Bymart membership discount department store. It's a thing in the Pacific Northwest. Let's go in and look at a couple of things. So I could go to wherever in the store and find some 9 volt batteries, then come back here to the hardware section and get some quadruple lot steel wool and then I can come over here to the canning section and get some paraffin. Then, then come over here to the health and beauty section and get some cotton balls. Make sure you get the ones that are 100% cotton. Then, then you could come over to whatever this section is and you can buy this Vaseline. And yes, this is the only size they carry. And then you can go to the checkout stand where everyone would see you, a grown man, purchasing Vaseline. Or instead of all of that, you can just come back here to the camping section where they have Zippo Tinder Shreds, Sterno, Sterno Fire Starter, some kind of pull a string fire starter, fuel tablets, the stove for the fuel tablets, or, or just buy a package of Coughlin's Fire Sticks. There's a dozen in the package, which is about enough to build three dozen fires. It costs about $3.99. They're waterproof, easy to light, stick it in your pocket, and off you go. I could bore you for hours with stories like when I'm in the field and I'm trying to build a campfire and there's other people camping in the area and somebody's standing there telling me that what I'm doing is wrong and the fire starter that I have is wrong and whatever it is that he makes out of chewing gum and Vaseline is far better. And when I say, really, that sounds pretty cool. Could I try one? Oh, he doesn't have any with him. I could tell you about I'm telling somebody, okay, we're going to go camping next month and it's going to be cold and wet, so make sure you bring some good fire starting items. And he says, oh yeah, he's going to make something out of paraffin and something or other. And then when we get into the field and I say, did you bring whatever it was you were going to make? Oh, I didn't get around to making those. That type of thing is far more common in my experience than somebody actually getting their stuff together and making whatever great homemade device they're going to make. That's why I so often advocate just go buy a good product and stick with it. But on the subject of homemade fire starters that you're gonna make, let me show you something. Now before we get to our bag full of all the things you can use to make your own good fire starter, I want to address another thing. There was a comment from somebody talking about how Bic lighters were the greatest, and he had several reasons, one of which was because they float. Now that's interesting. I carry a Bic lighter, but I have never tested whether or not it would float. So let's test that right now. Here's a mug and a bottle of water. And this is just tap water. Let's see if our Bic lighter will float. Now, 
this is a genuine Bic lighter. This particular one is the one that I carry with me all the time. And it most certainly does not float. However, there's certain products where the brand name becomes synonymous with the product. Like a lot of people will refer to all facial tissue as Kleenex. Maybe he didn't mean specifically Bic brand. Maybe he meant one of the other types of butane lighter. Now, this lighter I know worked this morning, but it doesn't work now. It should start working again once I get it dried off. Here is, I think this is called a Scripto or something like that. It's a cheap knockoff of the Bic. And it does float. Floats like an iceberg, but it floats. Here's another knockoff brand. And it also floats. So there is some truth to the notion that these disposable butane lighters will float. But the blanket statement that they all will it doesn't appear to be true. And using specifically the Bic brand, at least the one I have, doesn't appear to be true either. Okay, so with that, let's take a look at our bag full of fire starters people talk about. And of course, cotton balls, a bag of Doritos, the 4 aught steel wool, here's some paraffin, sterno, A flannel shirt, yeah, we'll get there. And some shot shells. Okay, now, when it comes to the cotton balls, the homemade fire starting item that was mentioned the most often that everyone seemed to think was the greatest thing you could have was cotton balls that are covered with Vaseline. Now, hold on. Everybody take a minute to laugh at that word. Okay. So many people mentioned cotton balls with Vaseline on them that I had to create my own comment and pin it just so everybody would see that, in which I wrote something to the effect of, it shouldn't surprise anybody that I don't have any cotton balls or Vaseline in my possession. And there was one person in particular that made a comment, something to the effect of, you don't have cotton balls, aren't you a dental assistant? Okay, well, yes I am. And I've worked at several clinics over the years, and we have cotton pellets, cotton rolls, cotton two by two swabs, none of which are really the same thing as a cotton ball. I have never worked in a clinic that had cotton balls in the office. And when it comes to this particular product, oh wait, everybody laugh again. Okay, it shouldn't surprise anybody that I don't have that on hand either. And that means I have to take a side detour here. I try to keep presentations like this family friendly, but they are really made for adults and we're about to have an adult moment. At this point in my life, pretty much any woman that I'm going to date would be comparable to my A1 platform. Still works, still works fine, but it's hardly the latest, greatest, up to date thing anymore. It's old, has some replacement parts, and requires a lot of PMCS and CLP to make it work correctly. And men, if your girlfriend requires a lot of CLP to work correctly, Believe me when I tell you, there's a lot of products on the market that are going to work far better than Vaseline. Okay, now can we get back to our fire building topic? People talk about having cotton balls covered with Vaseline and putting that in a Ziploc baggie, putting it in your pocket. I've found that in my pockets, Ziploc baggies sometimes get torn, they get broken, and I do not want Vaseline in my pocket. In creating a fire starter of cotton balls and Vaseline, I had to put on procedure gloves so I could get the thing made without getting this nasty stuff on my hands. 
And now in the field, when I go to build a fire with it, I'm gonna to have to use a stick or something to get it out of the container. And the container I'm going to use is this hard-sided container with a screw-off top. That way, nothing breaks and I don't get the Vaseline in my pocket. So we'll put that to the test in a few minutes. Some other things we have, like the sterno. Not that you would just light your can of sterno, but that you could take that out of the container, put it on your, your tinder, and get it to light that way. We'll put that to the test, too. Now, the Doritos? Yes, someone actually mentioned how flammable they are. Are they? We'll put that to the test. So, let's go to our fire building spot and see what I can accomplish. So here we are under our fire building tree. Please remember that things like this have to be done in real time. I can't do a lot of do-overs, so you are going to have to put up with me tripping over words and letters. Now, in part one, I talked about building the fire under the tree because we're not building a signal fire, we're building a keep me warm fire, and this tree can protect from any rain that might happen to fall. There were several people who pointed out that you don't want to build a fire under a tree like this if there's snow in the tree. Okay, that is correct. However, it's also along the lines of me telling you, now once you get the fire going, don't try to eat it. <laughs> kind of goes without saying. And since you can easily tell that there's no snow on any of these trees, again, kind of goes without saying. Another thing I want to point out, here's our three cigarette lighters that were underwater. That one now works. This one now works. And my Bic lighter now works. Just had to give them a few minutes to dry out. Okay, so I've got my tinder assembled. And we're going to start with the can of Sterno. Now, you're not going to just light the can of Sterno and build a fire on top of it. I'm going to get your tinder organized like I have it. And then I'm going to open the can of Sterno. And just get some of this gel out of the can and it's kind of the consistency of jello pudding I guess you'd say and we'll get some of this and you don't want to use up your whole can but we'll use a generous enough portion of it there you go Quickly put the lid back on so this doesn't dry out. And then we'll assemble our tinder on top of it. And light our sterno. And see if that'll start our fire. Now, the sterno burns. If it goes out, it's very easily relit. And I'm going to have to go with that looks like a pretty good fire starter. Very easy to light, burns. If the wind blew it out, you relight it. It gets my tinder going. That looks okay. Downside is you leave the lid off of this, it'll dry out very fairly, fairly quickly. Downside is, I don't want to carry this can in my pocket. Downside is, even though this is a good, I think, aluminum can, it can still get punctured and the lid isn't that secure. And I don't like having things that are liquid or gelatinous in my pocket. So, is that good? I'm going to say yes, but not necessarily something I'd want to carry in my pocket. Now, let's try another fire starter. Now, a couple of other people suggested that corn chips burn really well. Okay, got some more tinder assembled. I got some nacho cheese Doritos. So let's take some corn chips and put out here as a fire starter. Let's 
that is certainly burning. Put that down here. They are burning. We'll put some of our tinder on top of that. Okay, that looks like it's working pretty well. Now, would I carry Doritos as a fire starter? No. However, if you had some kind of corn chips in your pack that you were going to eat and you needed a fire going and everything's wet and you don't have anything that'll burn, yeah, it looks like our Doritos are gonna be pretty good. In fact, hold on, let's try this. Just based on this, I'm gonna to have to say that the value of Doritos as a fire starter might be pretty well equal with its value as a snack. Okay, now I have some more tinder assembled and I've got some steel wool and a nine volt battery. Now I tried this in part one and it did not work. But what I was using was an SOS pad. I had washed all the soap off it, then thoroughly dried it, and it just didn't work very well. And quite a few people told me that what you have to use is four aught steel wool or quadruple aught. And that's what I have here. And let's see how well this does. And this is in pads, like our SOS pad was, but it's much finer. If there's any oil on it, I can't tell. Doesn't feel like there is. Open that up a little bit. Now, to me, this is in the category, like our Doritos, you wouldn't carry that for the purpose of fire building, but if you didn't have anything else to start a fire and you happen to, for whatever reason, have steel wool with you, now, you'll see here that that's catching on. That's as the result of I accidentally touched it with the battery. But although it's fired up a little, it I can see how that might work if you did it right and with some practice. It. Might be something that might be useful, but it's not working too well for me here. Now, this may have to do with it being technique sensitive and I'm using the wrong technique. And there's certainly some combustion going on. Try not to suck in the smoke while you're doing this.
And there it is, our tinder is burning. So it requires that you just happen to have steel wool and that you just happen to have a nine volt battery and that you're a blowhard, <laughs> which many people have described me as being, but my tinder is burning. So with the right steel wool and the right technique and the right tinder, this does work and you could get a fire going with that. But it looks like rather than holding it together like I was doing, putting it down, tinder on top is the way to go. Yep, and I could easily stack more tinder on there and continue the fire. So what we have shown here is that although not ideal, steel wool will at least work. Let's try something else. Next on the agenda is using your firearm to start your fire. Now, before you get too bent out of shape, this is something that was brought up in several different ways by a lot of different people, so we do have to discuss it. And it starts with a demonstration. Many of you already know this, but let's have some patience with the people who don't. Now, when your propellant is inside the shell casing and combustion is initiated by the primer, combustion is instantaneous and violent. But when it's outside the shell casing and combustion is initiated by your lighter, your propellant will burn as opposed to detonating. And I may be using those terms slightly incorrectly, but you get what I mean. Now I've got some tinder and I have three rounds worth of propellant from 556 casings. And let's light this. And there it goes. You see it didn't really explode. It burns and it burns pretty hot. And it's gonna get our tinder going just a little bit. And if I had maybe some different tinder or really worked at it, you could get a fire going with that. But although that fire is hot, it's a very short duration. And so, unless you had quite a few rounds worth, it might not be the best thing to start your fire. Now, we also run into some other problems in that getting the projectile out of the shell casing so that you can get the propellant out of the shell casing can cause you some difficulties. Now with some of your neck down casings, you might be able to pry that loose. What you can also do is fire one round, recover that casing, and then use it to pry loose the projectile from another shell casing. Obviously, if you just carried some kind of Leatherman, then this would be much easier to do. However, although I carry a version of a Leatherman in my pack, it's not something I typically have in my pockets. And what I just showed you works pretty well with casings like this. But could you even imagine me trying to pry the projectile out of one of my 38 super casings? That would be something that would be difficult to do. And just trying to pry it with my hand, I'm not able to do that. Using my miniature Leatherman That's gonna take some real work. And it's coming out of there. Also remember that when you buy ammunition that's straight case for handguns, typically that crimp is really tight. You can see that this could be a difficult prospect. And with a straight casing that's larger caliber, 
like in this case, 38. The idea of firing one, recovering the casing and using it to pry the cart and a bullet out of the next one is, you can see, this would be something very difficult to do. And once I do it, there isn't that much propellant in here. Now, if you have really large caliber firearms, not large in terms of diameter, but large in terms of case capacity, seven millimeter rem mag, something like that, then you would have enough. You can see this is just not working. If I wanted to spend a lot more time on it, I could make it work. But it would be very difficult to do. Imagine me trying to do this in the rain and in the dark. So, it's just not a practical thing to do. And we have cartridges with a lot of case capacity. You can get more and it would be something that could be used, but still not a particularly good fire starting method. Then there's another problem about ammunition limitations. Now, recently someone contacted me and told me that in the state in which he resides, when you're hunting deer with a rifle, the law only allows you to have 10 cartridges on your person. So like five in your gun and five in your pocket. Now that does not make any sense to me, but that is what is reported to me to be the law in some jurisdictions. When you're only allowed to have 10 rounds, I'd be really reluctant to start tearing them apart. Now, other types of ammo might be a little easier to get the propellant out, like plastic shot shells. And this plastic is tougher than some people give credit for. But if you have a pocket knife, it's fairly easy to cut the shell open. You've got to be careful in doing this. You do something like that, and you might lose all your propellant. Now, in this case, I just lost my shot. Take out the shot cup, and there's some propellant in there. You can dump that out. But it, again, it's really not all that much. Now, let's put our tinder on top of this and light this with our lighter. burns very hot, very fast, and in this case, we actually got a little bit of combustion going there. Of course, this was already to some degree ignited by the previous one, but we see that this, if you put some work to it, and if I get down here, If I were to put some more materials on there, this could get something burning. So it is something that works, but there's other things in that go with it. Now, another thing that someone talked about is in that category of improvised fire starting devices, you don't have any matches, you don't have a lighter. Can you use ammunition to get your fire started? Well, <sighs> there were a couple of things that a couple of people mentioned. Let me show you something. Now I'm going to do a time consuming demonstration. Please bear with me. Something that someone mentioned was if you didn't have matches or a cigarette lighter, you don't have any real source of combustion, a way that you could use your gun and your ammunition to start a fire. And it goes like this. First, 
I'm going to cut open a couple of shot shells and get the propellant out of them. Now, as we saw earlier, you got to be careful doing this because you can scatter your propellant all over the place. And again, I remind everyone that this is something you may end up having to do in the dark. And I could have cut these ahead of time, but part of what I'm doing here is I want to show how time consuming this would be. So again, dump that shot out. Get our shot cup out. Put some propellant right there. And we're going to use two shells worth. Because if you're going to do it, we'll make sure that you only have to do it once. Let's err on the side of more propellant. Okay. Now, I'm going to cut open a third shell. This has to be done more carefully. We're going to cut this one up at the very top of the shell. because we still want to have most of the length of the shell. Let me get the shot cup out of there. So we have three shells worth of propellant. Now, I'm gonna take my flannel shirt Decent amount of cloth. And remember, we're simulating the condition here. That you don't have any kind of match, lighter, anything you can start a fire, anything you can make a spark with. Okay, I'm going to take this cloth and stuff that pretty far down in there into the shot shell. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's coming. Okay, then we're going to load that into our shotgun. And the idea is that I'm going to shoot this cloth out here onto the ground and the primer will have made it ignite and then I'll put that to the powder and we'll start a fire. Well, one thing, it knocked my cloth clear over there. And that did not ignite this cloth at all. There's no ember, no char, no evidence that it sparked it at all. Now, another thing that was suggested was that we'll take a shot shell. And for reasons that will become obvious momentarily, we'll take a shot out of it. And we are going to take the propellant out of this as well. Some people might suggest leaving the propellant in. It 
really would be questionable if you did that. And then we'll load this into the shotgun. And what it will do, remember that was the empty casing left over from before. And now the primer will shoot a spark clear out of this barrel and ignite our propellant. Well, it did shoot a spark out the barrel and it did not ignite our propellant. It just scattered our propellant all over the countryside. This is something that maybe if you played around with it for a long time and had just the right thing under just the right conditions might work. I'm going to say for the vast majority of us, with the vast majority of the guns we have, this is something that really isn't going to work. But I will try one more thing. This time I won't make you sit through watching me cut the shells apart. So now what I've done is I've cut open two shot shells and put two shot shells worth of propellant on our piece of bark. Cut open a third shot shell and left the propellant in it. Stuffed our piece of flannel shirt, got a new piece, into the shot shell and now I'll shoot this out onto the ground and we're going to hope that that propellant will actually ignite or at least give us some char on our piece of flannel shirt and that we'll use that to get our propellant ignited. Well and again it knocked it clear over there and got some soot on it. Not even warm. Also, notice that you heard the primer go off, but it didn't seem like the propellant burned at all. It typically doesn't unless it's got some compression in there, and that's not the right word. But having the shot in the shot shell keeps it contained in a way that it'll detonate correctly. And without that, the propellant won't combust at all. And so the idea of using the primer to start your propellant, except when you're actually shooting the gun with the shot in there, looks like it really isn't going to work. However, again, if we that gives us a very short live burn but it did get an ember or two going on some of our little sticks. And so under the right conditions, that might work. But you have to weigh that against how many shot shells do you have and how badly might you need those shot shells. Okay, let's try something else. Okay, this presentation's gone on a lot longer than any of us wanted to, but I only have two fire starters left. The first one is paraffin coated cloth or some other kind of combustible. Some people will use dryer lint. One of the crew use sections of cotton rope. I just have pieces of flannel shirt and they're coated with paraffin. One I actually rolled up pretty tight. One I just put it on a wadded up piece of the cloth. Now as a basis of comparison, let's start with just a flannel shirt and see if it will burn. And of course it will a little bit, somewhat, but not for a really long time. And I gotta say that shirt that was supposed to be cotton seems to be burning like something other than cotton. <sighs> now, of course, that burned, but remember it's also not in any way water resistant. So let's try our piece of cloth here. And what you want to do is break that a little bit to expose some of the cloth and light it. And it doesn't light as quickly as just the bare material did. And in this case, not at all.
tear that open a little more. What you're seeing here isn't the wax. That's some kind of plastic shirt that was supposed to be cotton. But you can see that that's burning pretty well. And I can put my tinder on there. And it's going to obviously burn. It would appear that care has to be taken to make sure you're using the right type of cloth. Again, dryer lint, cotton may be better than my fake shirt. Now, another thing is that before burning something like this, we again may want to make sure we're exposing some of that material. Maybe tear it up just a little bit. And see, and that catches on pretty well. And this being rolled up like it is, it's going to burn not quite as much as that one did, but I think it'll burn for quite a bit longer. But as we can see, this kind of thing, if coated correctly, is waterproof. They're easy to make, and it starts a fire pretty well. Now, this is where I have to go on my spiel about those things that we really have versus all of those great things that we're gonna have or we're gonna make. And as I have harped so many times, there's a lot of people that don't have anything, but they consider themselves to be really prepped because someday they're gonna make it. Even when someone exerts the effort of going to the store and getting the paraffin and all that kind of thing, a lot of times that ends up on the shelf in the garage and people never quite get around to making the fire starter. If that's who you are, just buy a pre-made thing. Okay, now one more piece of fire starting equipment. Okay, one more fire starter. But before we get to this, I have to point out that that paraffin coated cloth is still sitting over there in the snow burning about seven minutes later. So that looks like a really good one. Okay, with that, finally, the main event, the star of the show, cotton balls with Vaseline on them. Oh, well, being out here today, I've gotten wax all over me. I've gotten soot and dirt all over me. I leaned against this tree and got pitch all over me. All of those things are preferable to this nasty stuff. So let's use a stick and get one of our cotton balls out the lid back on. Let's see how well this lights. And it lights right up. And of course, this being petroleum jelly, we have to think that, that it would be somewhat water resistant. Put our tinder on top of that. And, well, didn't work out as well as some of the other things I've just dumped the tinder on, but still, it's burning. And if we give that a minute, it'll catch on. It looks like that's just what it's doing. And there it goes. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but what we see here is that our Vaseline coated cotton ball will certainly work. Now, the thing for me is that would I rather carry this or just carry some paraffin coated cloth or just carry one of those Coglins fire starters I showed you at the beginning? This would be among my least likely choices. I think even the Doritos would be something I'd carry before I'd carry this. 
And that deals with all the things I talked about, about it leaking in my pocket and me not wanting to touch it. However, cotton balls and Vaseline are certainly both inexpensive. It was very easy to get that together when I had the gloves on. And if you will actually go to the store and get those materials and make the product and carry it properly, it can certainly work. I know this doesn't look like much, but this tinder I'm using is damp, and this is most certainly burning, and I could easily put more on there and have a real fire. So the takeaways from all of this. Well, first, there won't be a part three. I think we've beaten this subject into the ground. Secondly, the different types of fire starters someone might use are really limited only by the budget and your imagination. And what works for you and your environment might not be what works best for someone else in their environment. Know yourself, seek self-improvement, get out here and actually try some things. And above all, I would say if the word gonna is a word you use a lot, then you're doing something wrong. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching Starting a Fire Under Adverse Conditions, Part 2.